Well, and I think so often we just assume that consolation in this world is the highest good, right? Mm. Uh, that, um, but the, it, it may be the better way of said, saying salvation comes through the suffering of God's people. Maybe the better way of saying it is salvation comes through the laying down of God's people's lives, right? That it's the mm. act of laying my life down that produces the fruit. It's the mm-hmm. act of dying to myself and giving myself up that the the fruit and the harvest comes. And the, it, it, you know, from the, like our life decisions are so often based off of what's going to bring the most consolation. I'll take this job because it's going to bring consolation. I'll, 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 I'll do this or I'll do that because it's going to bring the most consolation. And um, the, but the mission field mm-hmm. and whether you're in full-time mission in India, like, like yeah, right, uh, right. or you're going into the mission territory of your parish or your workplace, it's, it, are we in it for the consolation or are we in it just to lay our life down for mm-hmm. the Lord? Mm-hmm. And I think it's, it's a, a, a powerful question. So story time continues. Um, <clears throat> Adoram, right? They, um, they go to India. And from there, they decide to go to... So first of all, the dad says yes. So that's, that's dad worth said noting. Yes, yes. Worth noting. Yeah. Uh, dad's friend said, if that was my daughter, I would tie her to a bedpost and never let her leave the house. Isn't that wild? But he said, let's go for it. Let's go for it. <laughs> that wasn't that's a direct so quote bold, from him. But no. But yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, if it was, that's amazing. He just writes him back a letter. Let's go let's for it. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> so they decide to go to Burmese. And I just want to... Um, I want to highlight kind of the suffering they went through, right? Um as they're, as they're going to Burma, Anne becomes pregnant and they lose the baby, the, their first baby. And then they have a second child and at eight months of age, they lose that child and as they're traveling to, to get to the mission field, right? And this is the early 1800s. And so, I don't know, losing children probably isn't completely uh, unbeknownst to people at that time. But they're in Burma for... Um, 10 years, a decade, and they have seen no converts, not a single convert. And um, the it, it, after this decade, Adoram is put in prison. And Anne discovers when he's in prison, uh, 10 years of laboring in Burma with no, with no converts, that Anne's pregnant. And then he leaves, when he, by the time he gets out of prison, um, the the child that they had has died and and 17 i mean i'm sorry 11 months after he gets out of prison and dies as well and so he's he's in burma and he he's lost his wife and he's lost three children and he's he's laboring in the, in the vineyard and this is his his reaction right he starts self doubt takes over and he starts to wonder like did i become a missionary for ambition or fame and not humility and self denying love And he starts to really examine himself like all of this in the midst of the suffering. He realizes I actually there there was a part of me that just got into this for ambition and fame. Mm -hmm. And he struck with this total humility. And so often I think we do that, right? Like we get we say yes to the Lord because there's this hidden Teresa of Avila calls it imperfect love, right? Where like there's this hidden agenda where like, I want the consolation of being the Lord's missionary, or I want to see the consolation of bearing fruit for the kingdom. And I want the accolades of people that think I'm a good person. I'm doing yeah. good things. Like uh, so often that follows us in ministry. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about that? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm just, I'm um, thinking through this story. I've, I've heard you share this before and uh, just continue to be struck by it. I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is that is that he comes to that realization after he has subjected his wife and children to lay their lives down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be honest, yeah, I've I've had similar conver- conversations with the Lord. You know mm-hmm. that that uh, all three of us are entering into like a, a a really a really focused missionary life. Just last night, we were looking at our spring schedule and seeing the number of weekends that we're going to be away from the kids or that I'm going to be away from the kids and, mm-hmm. and asking like, okay, is this, uh, God, is this, is this still consistent with the call that you've placed here? Or is this, is this motivated by some mm-hmm. imperfect love? Mm-hmm. So I think, I think that is a, that is a question that we need to ask. And, and I think the fruit of it as, as you'll get to is, is just that the, the Lord invites us to be purified in our, in our commitment to mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. I just, I just wonder how else he would have discovered it was imperfect love. 
Mm. Yeah, that's a good and, word. And that and that's my that that's constantly what I go back to is that like the virtue is worked in us on the backside of the revelation that God is that which transcends that suffering. Yeah. Right. And and at least in my life, I, I'm trying to recall a single time where that hasn't been the case. The only times I realize my own like um self reliance or or my or my like um I don't know self consuming thoughts, imperfect love. It's always on the other side of like, oh man, that was really hard. And I noticed that I wanted to give up the whole time. Why was that? And then when the Lord fills that place and I'm in it the next time, I almost don't even recognize it as suffering anymore, which is funny when Paul starts talking about all those things. I wonder at what point he was just like, I'm so connected to the Lord. I've seen this before, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then, but that becomes unstoppable. That, they, that is yeah, the, yeah. that's the missionary that converts the nations. That's the Francis Xavier's of the world. That's the yeah. Isaac Jogues of the world. And obviously not only our Catholic brothers and sisters pursue this radical call, which is yeah. why this story is so touching. But I yeah. don't know if there's another way he could have realized that maybe there's this imperfect love that I, I want to let go so I can be yeah. closer to you. Because the, fr- the fruit of suffering is both growth and uh, persecution. Right? Yes. Growth and restriction. Yes. And, and, and repentance. But, but, when, but when the, the negatively impactful component of that loses its power because we've aligned ourselves to Christ, then, then there's only room for growth. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I, I do actually think that that is where the crux of Catholic theology is at. And it's why it's so beautiful. It's why it's right. Yeah, it's because it, it's both, and it's so wedded, and it's so clear. And you can you can see it in the life of Jesus. You can see it in the life of Paul. And I'm seeing it in my life, like in, in a in a more profound way than ever. And anyway, I, I think all that to say, like, what a revelation that is. Yeah. Like, think about his soul. Yeah. Like, how greater was his soul? I bet fruit starts happening. I don't even know this story, but I can't wait to hear it because yeah. whenever we realize that, of course, fruit starts happening. Mm-hmm. Right. Like. Of course, because I, I I've set that aside, and now Lord, it really needs to be you. Yeah. Like, because maybe it, maybe your story is different than that. If you're listening today, and you're like, well, I've actually been doing it for ten years, and I have abundant fruit because my gifts are greater than that guy's. Well, even that is going to come to the point at which at which it meets a limit. Yeah. Well, and I mean, and, I just yeah. could you and not, none of us have really truly experienced this. Like, he went to Burma, and so there was there was no Burmese to English dictionary when he went there. There was no dictionary. Yeah, yeah. So like he didn't, there was no means to, to even, he had to learn the language. Right. And that there's no mm-hmm. Burmese Bible. Right. There's sure. like, so he, there's, he, he doesn't have even the resources. I think sometimes like it, we're like, Oh, people don't understand me. I'm trying to share the gospel mm-hmm. and they don't, they, they're not listening or yeah. it's like, like, dude, you're not alone. Like people have That's shed good. their blood for this. Mm-hmm. Right. Like the, the, there's a, a whole cloud of witnesses that understands what you're going through That's right, and Dan, Dan. don't coddle yourself so much to think you have it so hard when they had it way harder. Right. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Paul, like he labored like recklessly for the sake of the gospel to have reached you. Right. Mm-hmm. And then other missionaries have labored recklessly for the sake of the gospel to, mm. to reach you. And now ne- like you are already standing as, as we all to say, you're yeah. already standing on the shoulders of giants. They've yeah. already done all the really hard work. Mm-hmm. And now you're complaining because in your American comfortable house, like not everyone welcomes you right away. Yeah, well, right. Aaron, what do you think about this? Cause all of what Dan's saying, like it also, those are the people that don't, don't fall out of the church. Like once you go that far with the yeah. Lord, mm. it's like, he's real. Yeah. You know, it, it, the times when I doubt, are the times at which I, I, yeah. I'm kind of backing out a little. Yeah, it, it, It's the moment, like when you go to those places with him, he's real or he's not. The only thing he's not mm-hmm. is in between. And we always treat him like in between in the Western world. Now, not always. Now, again, I, I, don't, I don't mean that. I, I need to be careful there. I, like, I just think our tendency in the Western world, because we have so much. So this is, is Adirondam Judson's response, right? So at this point in his life, he kind of retreats into himself or retreats into the Lord is probably better. And he starts reading the Catholic mystics, right? Like, mm. good, good work. And um, he, he, said, he removes anything that might conceivably support pride or promote his own pleasure. So he had uh, honorary... Uh, uh, doctorates from Brown University. He mm. he publicly writes a letter to renounce that. He doesn't want an honorary doctorate, right? He publicly renounces and destroys all of his letters of con- uh, commendation. Because Did he read the Imitation like, of Christ? Did Thomas Akempis <laughs> get a hold of this guy? Know, He's maybe. like vanity of vanities. Yeah, man, get it all out. 
He gives away all this private wealth, right? Which was only six thousand uh, dollars, and, and then he re- and he requests from his church that his salary be reduced to one fourth. And so he's like, just completely. And this is the but this is the most insane thing is what you're saying, Brad. So he he digs a grave next to his hut in Burma, and he prays while uh, outside of the grave, and he just stares at the grave. And he said, God is to me the great unknown. I believe in him, but I find him not. He's in this this place of like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know what his contemplation is there. The mo- Like he's looking at the grave. Is he like hungering for death? Is he like, when am I going to die? Like, but he's been shout- like surrounded by death. And now he's there like mm-hmm. meditating, looking at his own grave. <laughs> like he has stripped himself of everything. He mm-hmm. has stripped himself of everything. And, um, uh, fruitfulness doesn't come right away. So after two more years, he does finally win um, two converts. I mean, I'm sorry, 18 converts. And um, the people start to hear about his suffering and his sacrifice and his all in this. And so other missionaries start joining him. And so now 12 years in, he's got a few other missionaries with him. And what he does is um, he he's working like during the day, he's just laboring all day long in the mission field, trying to share the gospel. And in the evenings, he is writing a Burmese to English dictionary so that the future missionaries will be able to learn the language faster and be able to share the gospel. There's the fruit. Yeah. And he starts to translate Hmm. the scriptures into, um, into the Burmese language and he spends 24 years on this project just to make sure that future missionaries have access to the language to reach the people group, which is pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I don't know what's going on. In your guys that mind. is wild. Uh, well, I've shared before on the show and Dan, when, when you and I were in Paris uh, at the, at the um, Paris school of missions um, two years ago, I was invited up. Uh, Father Bernard, our host there, invited us up to the the missionary library. Yeah, and he showed us a number of these examples where where similarly their missionaries had gone throughout Asia, and that the the first and most important work was was creating language. So he uh, he sh- he pulled out a number of these handwritten Bibles that were translated into different different Asian languages, and. Um, he said these these men had a title for themselves, or they they had a motto for themselves. They said we uh, we pave the roads that will be trod by the missionaries of the future. Mm. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> just like that's uh, what what if that what what if that was our attitude of humility? Right, um, Lord, let my name never be known. Yes, but let my work pave the road for the missionaries of the future to be able yeah. to carry the name of Jesus. Yeah, they have mar- there's martyr graves that are, that are marked known unto God. Uh huh. You know that like they had just lost themselves in the service of him and lost their lives. And upon being found faithful, uh, but we don't, we don't really know who it is, you know? Yeah. And there is something about that. And that, that's why I was curious about your thoughts, Aaron, when I was mentioning that earlier about like, when you go that far, he's real. Because like you talk about those trips to France and like, that is what I think about when you first told me about the library is like, when you go that far, it's yeah. it's like, you are you are staking your entire life on writing a Bible that other missionaries are going to pick up and use. Like the the only plausible way that that's in any way sane is if he's real. Yeah, it, it just is, and the, and there is a place there that mm-hmm. that seems absurd on its face until you get there. Yeah, and then it's like it's not absurd at all. It's yeah. it's the only thing that makes sense. It's all of my life for the rest of my life. It's, well, it's I think the thing I think Brad. Furthermore, sometimes. And Daniel were mentioning this earlier as well. Sometimes we have to have that moment of an absurd decision so that yeah. so that we can exist in the place of realizing, mm-hmm. yes, I've given it all to you. Yeah. And that does look different for every person. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dan, as you were as sharing about sort of the the experience of our American church, like that 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 can't be a word of condemnation, but it's no. gotta be a word of conviction. Yeah. That that I like I've got to do something crazy ridiculous with my life. To, to give it to the Lord so that I can I can find myself in the place of of depending on him. Yep. Yeah. 